Let's prepare this problem by drawing a picture because it's pretty difficult to get a sense for what's happening without visualizing it that way. So there's two identical loudspeakers and they're two meters apart and they're emitting 1800 hertz sound waves into a room. Okay, so it looks like this. Here's one loudspeaker, okay, and it's emitting sound waves. And there's a second loudspeaker and it's two meters apart. Okay, and it's emitting sound waves as well. You want to know at a point four meters directly in front of one of the speakers, perpendicular to the plane of the speaker, so that's perpendicular to this line. So at a point four meters in front of this speaker, so right here, is this a point of maximum constructive interference, perfect destructive interference, or something in between? Okay, so this distance is 2.0 meters. This distance is 4.0 meters. And we have the sound from this speaker and the sound from this speaker overlapping at this point. And the question is this, is it constructive interference, is it destructive interference, or is it something in between? Now fundamentally, this is a question of the difference in the travel distance from the two speakers. Our conditions for constructive and destructive interference depend upon the difference in distance from the two sources of sound. If the difference in distance is equal to m times the wavelength, that's constructive. Okay, If the difference in the distance from the two sound sources is equal to an integer plus a half times the wavelength, that's a destructive interference. So basically, we want to know which case does this situation correspond to. And we can see, to make sense of this, we need to figure out how far is it from this speaker to this point? Now, from this speaker to that point is 4 meters. How about from this one? Well, this is a right triangle. This distance is 4 meters. This distance is 2 meters. So this distance is the square root of 4 squared plus 2 squared. And we're going to keep some extra significant figures here. We'll get it's 4.472 meters. So for this situation that we sketched right here, the difference in distance, the path length difference from the two speakers is 0 0.472 meters. That's going to be an important number for us. Now another important number for us is going to be the wavelength of the sound. Now you know the wavelength is related to the frequency. And it's related this way. If we take our fundamental relationship for sinusoidal waves and rewrite it, the wavelength is just V over F. Well, V is 340 meters per second. F is equal to 1800 hertz. And so we end up with a wavelength. And we'll keep some extra significant figures too, just so to avoid rounding errors. We end up with a wavelength of 0.1889 meters. Okay? So this is the difference in distance from this speaker and this speaker at this point. This is the wavelength of sound. So the question is, when the sound from here and the sound from here meet at this point, do they do constructive or destructive interference? And let's solve and figure that out. Now we know if the difference in these two distances was equal to 1 times the wavelength, that would be constructive interference. If it was 2 times the wavelength, it would be constructive interference. So what we need to look at, basically, is the ratio of delta d to lambda, okay? If I take this relationship and I rewrite it, I get this. Delta d over lambda equals m. So I take this relationship and I rewrite it. If that's true, if delta d over lambda is equal to an integer, that's constructive interference. If delta d divided by lambda, on the other hand, is equal to an integer plus one half, that corresponds to this case right here, delta d over lambda, m plus a half, that would be a case of destructive interference. Well, let's figure out, for this case, what is delta d divided by lambda? Well, delta d is equal to 0 0.47 2, lambda is equal to 0 0.1189, I'm sorry, 1, 
eight, eight, nine. And if we do the ratio, rounding it to two significant figures, we get this. The ratio is just 2.5. Well, 2.5, that's two and a half. Two and a half clearly corresponds to this case right here. It's an integer, two plus a half. And so I have exact destructive interference. The waves have overlapped, so at the crests of one wave meets the trough of the other wave, and so as a consequence, at that point, I have crests meaning troughs, and so as a consequence, the waves are exactly out of phase, they cancel, and so I have perfect destructive interference at this point. Here's our assessment. Our assessment's this. The wavelength is pretty short, okay? It's less than 20 centimeters. The path length difference is nearly half a meter. And so it's multiples of the wavelength. And so we could be in a region where I have some destructive interference. If this distance was really, really small compared to the wavelength, I'm gonna have constructive interference. But I could be in a region where I'd have some destructive interference. So this makes some sense. And so looking back, seems reasonable. This distance is small compared to that. And so I could be into the chain where I have higher values of M. Destructive interference is quite an interesting possibility. Why would someone be listening on a pair of stereo speakers exactly two meters apart to a pure tone at 1800 hertz? That is a question that we'll leave unanswered.